Thanks everyone for coming. Actually, who, who is from the EF here? Okay, not everyone, that's good. All right, uh, I, my name is Tore, and I'm working for the Privacy and Scaling Explorations team at the Ethereum Foundation, and in these slides I will talk about what we do in our team and uh, how you can get involved. Before I start, I would like to get a sense for the room, so uh, please raise your hand if you have, uh, if you have used a ZK-powered application in the past. Nice, that's like 30%, that's good. Um, and who has written code related to zero knowledge proofs? One, two, three, and two are from our team. One is our, our, our grantees. Okay, um, and who would be able to uh, like tell a relative about zero knowledge proof and explain like high level what AZKP does? Okay, 20%, great. Nice, so let's get started. The Privacy and Scaling Explorations team is one of the larger teams at the Ethereum Foundation. And what we do is we explore what can be done with zero knowledge proofs, what, what type of applications can be built. So we, we are not bu building proof systems ourselves. Um, we use the existing proof systems to build applications on top. Um, and uh, this uh, space is really exciting and rapidly evolving right now. Um, uh, especially due to some recent advancements in like engineering and academic work such as Plonk and Plookup, uh, uh, much more complex use cases are possible uh, just recently and so it's a really good time if you already had an itch to get involved, uh, to get involved now. So, the, what we do in our team usually, usually starts with a circuit. A circuit is a description for the Z ZKP system to tell it what it should be proving about. So we have a bunch of guys in our team that are deeply familiar with ZKPs and they um, understand what type of circuits could be useful and we build these circuits. On top of these circuits, we often build what we call gadgets or primitives. So these are tools or libraries that allow you as a non-ZK savvy developer to integrate the specific functionality that the circuit pro provides into an application. Um, yeah, and sometimes we also build like user-facing applications on top of these gadgets in order to like showcase to the ecosystem how this can be used. Um, on, the, on, the, on the side, we also do some other things such as education. So we do like blog posts and workshops uh, to help people um, get up to speed with ZKPs. Um, uh, one thing that we do quite a lot as well is grants. So we um, work a lot with the ecos ecosystem support program and that's the reason why I'm invited here today and in uh, the second part of this presentation I will show you a little bit how you can get involved and uh, get a grant with us. So this slide is sort of the a black box explanation just to get everybody on the same page about what ACKP is. So you might have heard that with a ZKP you can prove that you have done some computation correctly. And you might have also heard about all these different proof systems like SNARK, Starx, Plonk, Growth16 and, and all of that. Um, they all have in common that these proof systems need these circuits or something like that. Uh, so a description for the proof system that allows it to understand what uh, it, the proof should be about. Once you have this circuit, then you can set things up and you will have a prover algorithm and you have a verifier algorithm. If you satisfy the prover algorithm, so you give it the right witness, it will provide you with a short proof string. This is the actual proof. And that proof can then be fed to the verifier algorithm and this checks basically, um, gives you assurance that this computation really has been performed correctly. So, um, the, the, that way Ethereum is essentially able to learn whether something that uh, happened off-chain, some computation that happened off-chain and that is potentially large, uh, is correct or not. So it can learn something that it couldn't process itself. Um, and it has uh, sort of this scaling aspect to it. 
Um, it also has, um, the, like with zero knowledge proofs, um, it, it also gives you the optional ability to hide the inputs of this computation. So this is, what, uh, how, this is how zero knowledge proofs got their name because of this property, but it's actually an optional thing. So um, with these two things together, you have the scal scal uh, scalability aspect and you have this privacy aspect. Uh, and if you um, take them together and you use them in the right way, you can give Ethereum back its privacy and its scalability. And this is why we are in our team excited about uh, CKPs. So um, now I'm going to show you a couple of projects that are like in our team, that, that we work on in our team. Um, and these are just three projects. We, uh, I counted, we have 15 different projects at the moment. And you can see them all on our website. Uh, at the, on the last slide, I, I showcased, uh, we, uh, I have the link to that. Um, so I give just these three examples. And I've included the people that have right access to the repos here. That was, that was the easiest way for me to determine who is willing to be publicly associated with the project. Um, so the first project I want to talk about is CKEVM. Um, that's our largest project, and it's a really talented team, um, really interesting project. And what they work on, they build a set of, set of circuits that allow you to prove that you have processed a Ethereum transaction correctly. And of course, this can be useful for uh, like rollups, or uh, so the rollup can prove whatever state transitions happened in the rollup are correct, uh, and Ethereum can verify this then. Um, and maybe in the future, it could also be for, uh, useful for layer one, so that light, light, clients, light clients make use of this technology. Uh, this project is also called the Community Edition of CKEVM. So everything they build is open source. You can go on um, scal scal uh, privacy scaling minus exploration slash CKEVM circuits and look at what's going on there. And if you have the right skills, then um, you're welcome to uh, uh, become a contributor. Uh, they're working quite closely with the scroll project as well. Um, yeah, so please check that out. Vitalik has done a, a blog recently that um, shows um, like the differences between these various CKEVM projects. There are quite a number of them out there. And they all make like different trade-offs. This project goes for perfect compatibility with Ethereum at the expense of prover time. Um, yeah, uh, the, the project is written in the Halo 2 um, proof system and it's developed by Zcash. Uh, they made some modifications to that, but um, everybody's really excited about Halo 2. Um, yeah. So this was our first project. Um, the second project I want to show you here is Semaphore. Um, the main contributor is uh, Cedor. He's sitting back there. Um, and we have hired a PO, uh, Andy, who is not on the slide. And actually, Wager and Kobe, uh, these two guys, they have, uh, left, have left us a while ago, but they have made, made some very important uh, contributions. So uh, what is Semaphore? Semaphore is a protocol that allows you to prove that you are part of a group uh, privately. So you can think of a group as basically a Merkle tree, and uh, you create a, an identity, you stick it into this Merkle tree, and then you are able, using Semaphore, to prove that you are um, in this Merkle tree. In practice, it's a set of circuits, some contracts, and some JavaScript libraries that make it easy for developers to integrate this functionality into their applications. And Cedar has built some um, quick setup template it's really straightforward. Um, if you have an idea, something, uh, some application in mind that could use that, then uh, you can go ahead. Um, we, have, we have recently started a Semaphore Grants Rounds, and I will talk about that in a future slide. Uh, if you want to see Semaphore in action, you can go, I think, on the first floor. There is the temporary anonymous zone. And they will give you a card. You, you, on this card is a link. You uh, join. Uh, it allow, this link allows you to join the uh, DEFCON Bogota Semaphore group. And, and then you're also to, able to like, make use of that, inter, interact with some applications there. And uh, it's a nice showcase. Yeah, if you want to learn more about Semaphore, you can go on um, semaphore.appliedckp.org. 
So this is the last block, uh, project I want to show here. Uh, the name is Macy, and it's an uh, idea that Vitalik came um, up with. Uh, it's currently run or managed by an anonymous guy uh, called Q. And there are also two important um, people that don't write code here. This is V and Feeney. Uh, they should also, they're not included in this slide. So uh, Macy stands for Minimal Anti-Collusion Infrastructure. And uh, the idea is, uh, so the point of Macy is to prevent bribery in voting systems. So uh, as an example, you could have, you could think of um, something like Gitcoin, where there are voters that basically vote on allocation of funds. And uh, in this system, someone could say, everybody who provably voted for me will get an airdrop later on. And so this would sort of distort these um, uh, incentives of the quadratic funding system. And Macy can um, help you get around that using zero-knowledge proofs. Uh, how Macy works is that all the voters, they encrypt their votes, they put them on chain, and then there is a coordinator who tallies all the votes, and um, so he is able to decrypt the votes that are on chain, he tallies, tallies the votes, he publishes the result along with the zero knowledge proof that shows that um, the telling has been uh, performed correctly. So he only has uh, two choices. Either he doesn't participate at all or he uh, publishes the correct result. Another important uh, feature of uh, Macy is that it's always possible for voters to override their vote again. So if the briber looked over their shoulder while they were like voting, um, they could always change their mind later on and override that vote. Yeah, so this is Macy, how it works. You can also see this in action here on uh, DEF CON. They are running, together with the clear fund guys, clr.fund, they're running a quadratic funding round, uh, DEF CON, Bogota quadratic funding round. Uh, they are uh, like supporting uh, local communities here in Latin America, I think with 250K. Um, the team is also running a project called QFI. This is an incubator that helps local communities to spin up their own uh, quadratic funding round and basically provides them, uh, pro provide them with the infrastructure for that. Yeah, so these were like a sample, a couple of projects we are working on. Um, and I hope those got you excited because in the following slides I will talk about how you can get involved and how you can, can, can contribute to such projects. And in fact, these projects that I just uh, showed you were in large part built by also grantees that made like big contribu contribu contributions. So, the first um, thing that I want to talk about uh, in regards on how, how, how to get involved is targeted grants rounds that we're doing. So occasionally we um, just get out to the ecosystem and encourage them to submit applications uh, on a specific topic. The first one I want to mention here is uh, Semaphore. Uh, so this is a dedicated grants round for people that build an application on top of Semaphore or that extend Semaphore or that have like um, a completely different approach to so so uh, solve the same a problem as Semaphore. So we're uh, interested in supporting all, all such kind of uh, projects. Um, projects at all stages are welcome to apply here. You can uh, follow this QR code here. That, uh, it will lead you to the announcement blog post. And in this blog post, you, you, find, um, like you find your way to a, submi a, a submission um, uh, form where you can type in the actual application. And there will also be a, there is also a wish list which can give you some inspiration on what type of projects could be interesting to build on Semaphore. So examples for that could be um, anonymous voting application, whistleblowing application, anonymous chat applications, uh, anonymous um, reputation systems. Uh, all, there's a, 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 a huge amount of like untapped potential uh, here. Uh, one of our guys had the idea to build like a, f a private feedback bot in Discord that uh, our team can use internally to like share feedback. So yeah, please, if that's interesting for you, follow this uh, QR code and um, submit an application. 
Um, an upcoming grants round that we are currently preparing um, is the L2 community grants round. Uh, it is with James from the uh, Ethereum Foundation. Um, this will start on October 24th, so there will also be a blog post about that uh, with a submission form and a wish list. So examples of um, interesting things here would be like R&D stuff, like cross roll-up ex execution or uh, compression for roll-up, better compression for roll-up data, L L2 light clients, things like that. Educational efforts would be great to like inform the ecosystem about the uh, advantages of roll-ups and potentially the risks. Um, yeah. So yeah, please look forward to that. Um, so. These targeted grants rounds, uh, we get quite a, a lot of grants from that, but we, um, we, that's not most of the grants that we're doing. Most of the grants um, are what I would call um, discretionary grants. Um, so these are things where we find someone, someone tweeted a cool project they did on Twitter, and we re reach out to them and ask them, do, do you need support? Like, we can give you advice, or you ca we can support you with funding. Or sometimes people also come up to us with ideas. In general, if you are thinking about getting a grant from the EF, your first thought should be the ecosystem support program. Like they have the right uh, infrastructure and well-oiled machine to process your application and make it a nice experience. With us, it makes, more, it makes a lot of sense uh, to talk di directly to us, however, if you uh, have a ZK focus and if you're an individual. We are not really working with like uh, corps or uh, DeFi project, DAOs or whatever. Like, this is just too difficult for us to deal with in terms of like the due diligence. Yeah, so um, these type of dis discretionary grants are very often these are grant, uh, people that build something on top of our projects or that extend somehow the functionality of our existing, existing systems so people uh, find out what we're doing and just want to get involved somehow here. Quite often people come also to us with uh, ideas on their own that we don't really have um, in-house expertise on. So we have been doing uh, a number of ZK machine learning grants, for example, uh, lately, and we uh, like support them as good as we can with like, what we know and uh, with funding. Um, finally, we, we always have like, <laughs> some ideas of what, what we would be excited about. Um, if you have no idea at all like, uh, uh, about what you would like to do, but you do definitely have the right skills to do something, then uh, please talk to us. We have, uh, like these are normally the more difficult grants uh, or more complex projects. Like we would be really interested in supporting the Halo 2 ecosystem more, like um, building a DSL for that, make it as easy to write a circuit in uh, Circom, <laughs> I see the battleships guys are excited about it. Um, yeah, make it as easy to build a circuit in Halo 2 as it is for Circom, or have more circuits, make recursion easier, and things like that. Or if you're into breaking things, um, we want to see people that try to break these um, snark, fr snark friendly hash functions, for example. Um, yeah. So if any of that is up your alley, please uh, get in touch with us directly. We are also hiring. Um, I have in the last slide, I have a, in the next slide actually, I have a link to our jobs page. You can check those open positions out. But it also always makes sense to just talk to us. If you're good at Rust, if you um, have experience building circuits, or if you are um, like, an, if you're just really excited about uh, building applications about, uh, that, that use CKPs in some way, uh, and you don't really have a lot of um, deep experience in CK, it still makes sense to talk to, uh, to uh, talk to us directly. We might just be able to find something for you. And of course, if you don't want money, everything is open source. Everybody's welcome to contribute to what we're doing. So this, um, the last slide, how to get involved. Uh, our website still has our old name. It was called Applied CKP, so it's AppliedCKP.org. The GitHub is privacy minus scaling minus explorations. This left QR code here is for the, our job site, and the right uh, QR code is for our Discord. We have a very friendly and open Gis Git, uh, uh, Discord channel, so please um, get in touch there. 
uh, we would be welcoming you. Yeah, this was my uh, presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, you can uh, talk to me later, uh, and you can reach out to me on Telegram at ck underscore th.